Welcome back to character modeling. We're going to get started modeling our character here, starting with the body first, and we'll come back and model the head last. We're going to start with the torso area, and like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using both NURBS primitives and polygons. We're going to start off modeling with a NURBS cylinder to create his torso. And if you've just opened up Maya, you're probably under your animation tool set here. So go down under surfaces. We're going to grab some tools out of here. Uh, instead of uh, working back and forth between the two shelves here with these tabs, we're going to create a custom one. So go down to the custom shelf tab. Should be blank. We're going to add our own tools on here that we're going to be using for modeling. And that should speed up our workflow. First thing we're going to do is just drop a few things out there that we're going to need right away under Create, NURBS Primitive. I have the interactive creation turned off, so make sure you uncheck that first. I like to have Maya create uh, the primitives and the geometry and the origin here instead of uh, placing it myself. That keeps everything on center. So we're going to start off with a cylinder and to add things on your shelf, you hold down the control and shift keys together and then click on the thing that you want. In this case, it's a cylinder. You can just see it right there. Let's come under polygon primitives. We're going to do the same thing with interactive creation turned off. We're going to use a cube. And that's probably it for uh, our geometry right now. Uh, we'll add a few things later on here, but those are our two main ones that we're going to be building our geometry with. Let's come under Modify. We're going to be centering the pivot quite a bit, so let's go ahead and add that. Also under Edit, we're going to be uh, deleting the history on that, so delete by type history. Let's add that onto the shelf there. So we should have four things now. I like to access the Outliner under Window. Put the Outliner out there. Okay, and uh, we're also going to be inserting isoparms quite a bit, so let's add that. There's our isoparm. And that should get us started right now with those. Okay, zoom out here and let's go ahead and click on our cylinder. We should see it down here at the origin. I have on uh, wireframe on shaded as well as x-ray. So go ahead and do that, smooth shade it all. Okay, that way you can see through to the outline of the, the image plane while you're modeling, as well as kind of keeping track of, you can see the, the lines right there. I like to kind of keep track of my edge flow, having the wireframe on. Okay, with that kind of placed in the center of the chest, I'm gonna scale it up. And I've got my channel backs open here, so you can kind of check and see what's going on as far as placement. So I'm lining this up with the shoulder, kind of the top of the part of the shoulder right here, as well as his belly. And I'm really only concerned with the positive X side of the character. That's what we're going to model. We're not going to model both sides. Uh, we'll start off modeling out the um, the NURBS. Uh, completely, and then once we convert it over to polygons, we'll start uh, cutting it in half and just working on one side of the character. Okay, so uh, this character I noticed doesn't line up exactly uh, as far as the, the left and right side or positive, negative X side, so I'm not going to be concerned about this side, just uh, following the, the contour of the character's left side. Okay, let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. Uh, I'm going to come out here and just sort of show you there's a thicker line right here. This is the end sweep. If you come over to inputs where it says make NURB cylinder, you can see the start sweep and end sweep. If we click on that. This is how you can open and close this. Right now it's 0 to 360, which we want, but what we want is this end sweep facing forward. We're going to use that as the front part of the shirt as well as making the collar. So we're going to rotate that in, in Y, negative 90. So put in a negative 90 there, and you can see it rotating now to the front side. If we come here, we should see that thick line along the front. 
and it's opening right there so that's good so this is an important step don't uh, skip this right here if you shape out your torso and forgot to uh, move this over from the side uh, you won't be able to do that afterwards uh, so you need to do that as your first step and as far as sections eight uh, the default is fine we're going to need to add some spans here probably need about five go ahead and punch that in that should uh, get us going here as far as blocking out the basic shape Okay, I'm going to come to my front view first, right mouse click, go to control vertex, and I'm going to start shaping out the bottom part of the character first. So I'm dragging marquees over the whole section because as you can see right here, uh, we've got vertices going all the way around here. If I were to just click on the ones in the front, grabbing these and moving them, uh, you can see that we're only grabbing those and not all the way around. So we want to make sure that we're dragging a marquee across the whole uh, span right there. Okay, and I'm just roughing in the shape right now. Moving this up into position. And we're definitely going to need some more geometry up there. We don't have enough really to work with, but uh, it's enough right now to just kind of get us started. So I move this one down to what's going to be the, the opening of the arm that we'll extrude later on. So I've got that right there. And we'll probably scale it in just a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to need to make adjustments now on the side view. Okay, so starting up here on top, I'm grabbing that first three rows of vertices and hit E on the keyboard and we're going to kind of rotate these a little bit into position. Okay, and scaling them, kind of moving them back and then just grabbing individual groups now kind of grabbing the back two here and we'll come back and kind of reshape that a little bit And I'm going to rotate these as well, get them in a little bit better position, kind of following that belt line angle. And moving them into position and just starting to grab some individual points here, pulling them up into place. Now you'll find if you kind of pull one area out here and it looks like it's set up uh, it looks like it's following the contour properly and then you come down here and start pulling it very easily you can kind of overshoot it so uh, I'm a little bit more conservative I kind of place them inside uh, the contour right there and then kind of work my way out so it's not so much back and forth uh, this area here I kind of pulled them out a little too far I'm gonna to have to bring them back now and I'm starting to pay attention to my edge flow. So I want a nice clean edge flow. In other words, I don't want something pulled way down here, even though it's following the contour uh, in this view right here. You don't want a line kind of swinging down like that. Uh, you want to sort of keep things flowing in the same direction. And if we need to add more isoparms later on, we'll do that. Got this one point right here. I'm just going to pull that up. So I've got a nice edge flow here for the belt. And if you're not real familiar working with NURBS, uh, they're a little elusive at times. Uh, this point right here is actually pulling this edge right here. The, uh, the vertices don't sit on the surface the way they do with polygons. So if you pull something way out like this, uh, 
you know, your vertices are sitting out here, uh, not on the surface of the geometry. Uh, that's because they're spline based. That's how we get the nice kind of soft curves. So again, I'm looking at the edge flow here. Uh, this can actually kind of come down. We're sort of wanting to create a roundness right here for the belly. So I'm going to pull these up. So I'm kind of following this curve right here that I've drawn. And we will add more resolution in here. We're going to add some isoparms uh, a little bit later. Again, these are just rough shapes. So let's come back up here and start working with uh, the neck. So grabbing uh, both of these rows of vertices up here, I'm going to hit E on the keyboard, kind of rotate those into place. That's going to be the collar. And we'll start moving these down into position. And again, I'm kind of looking uh, at where the collar would be underneath here, because we're going to use this edge, the shape of this curve right here, to create the collar. But right now, I'm just looking at where the collar would actually begin. So right about here. This would come up a little bit higher. Like that. Okay. So this is starting to shape up pretty nicely. Let's take a look at it out here in our perspective view. So we need a little bit of uh, attention down here on the area that's going to be uh, where his pants will extrude out from. So I'm going to grab these points here. Are on the keyboard, just kind of bring them in a little bit. And I think overall, we could probably grab this from the front right here. I think our guy's belly right here needs to kind of come out a little bit more like that. Okay. And dragging a marquee. Since we have that angle now, we've got um, some vertices up there a little bit higher in the back. So make sure you grab those. I'm going to pull this down a little right along uh, the contour of this curve. And we're going to insert some isoparms here to hold that shape together. So I've got this kind of pulling down a little too far. I am clicking on individual ones right now. So there's the, the back side. I'm going to place that there and I'm going to grab the ones on the front here and kind of pull those down a little bit. Okay. Just sort of creating a nice edge flow. Okay, everything else is looking pretty good. I think we need to start inserting uh, isoparms to sort of build up this area right here for the collar. So to do that, we're going to right mouse click, go up to isoparm. If we click on here, it becomes red. Just click and drag and drop that down. You'll see the dotted yellow line. And we can come up here onto our shelf and click on Insert Isoparm, and you'll see it turn green. Okay, let's go ahead and insert a few more down here. And we can do that by just clicking, dragging, place them halfway between the other two. If we hold down the Shift key, we can make additional isoparms. Keep inserting those. So I'm pulling these down halfway between the existing isoparms just to break up that uh, geometry evenly. This will help when we go and convert this over to polygons, that everything is uh, kind of evenly spaced out. Let's go ahead and insert those. Come back out here and take a look at it. It's starting to look good. Uh, these points right here are kind of flaring out a little bit. 
making sure I'm grabbing the correct ones and I'm just going to kind of pull them in a little bit and I think tuck them in a little bit that way. Same thing right here, just sort of grabbing this one here in the very back and kind of tucking it in a little bit for the pants. Okay, so you can see we've got kind of a nice kind of rounded surface going on here. Okay, let's come back up here and work on the collar area and shoulders. So we're going to pull these shoulders out a little bit. I'm dragging a marquee, holding down the shift key and dragging a marquee, grabbing uh, the same points on the other side or on the keyboard and pulling those out and probably bringing them up just a little bit. Same thing here. With these points, I'm going to pull them up. And these ones that are out here a little bit further, they're going to go up as well. So just again, I'm just looking at this side over here. I'm not concerned about the other side. These can probably come in a little bit. Here we go. I'm just looking at the collar. All right, so that's starting to make a nice collar shape, I think. And the back is looking a little bit flat here. You can see his shoulders are kind of a little pointy right there. So I'm going to grab this point here and pull them out just to round it out a little bit more. And they could probably come out just a little. Okay. This point here could probably come out just a little bit as well. All right, so I think that's pretty good for the opening right there. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in one more isoparm just to kind of hold the position. So about halfway between those points and inserting the isoparm right there. Okay, I think we're at a point where we might want to just go ahead and save. So under File, go to Save Scene As. And if your project folder is set up, as it should be, it should take you right out to the project folder name and into the scenes directory. I've already got mine named geekmodelversion1.ma, so I'm using Maya ASCII. And this is a very good uh, habit to get into, is to just version up every time you complete sort of a major section of the model, uh, version up uh, to the next level. So we've got version 1 right here. Save as, I'm writing over my old file. So we've got that shaped out, and I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, we'll come back in the next lesson and we'll start building out the collar and uh, convert this into a polygon, and we'll do that in the next lesson.